Hi guys. I just recently finished my Mitsubishi A6 M2B by Sweet in 144 scale. And I was planning to go back to my Admiral Graf Spee build, but I found out that the acrylic gel I need to join the hull to the base plate had dried out and I had to order some new stuff. So I can't proceed with the Admiral Graf Spee right now as planned. So I, did decide, I decided to join in with a uh, club body into a joint project with uh, some helicopters involved. He built a nice 144 scale um, sea stallion or super stallion, I don't know exactly, but I will join in to this little group project with a uh, Revell 144 scale Chinook HC1. <coughs> this is um, with uh, decals for a Royal Air Force um, plane, helicopter, can I say plane? I don't know. Um, and my friend printed some United Nations decals. I want this kit in a raffle, so I'm quite convinced nothing is really in top shape, but I still want to give you a little review of what's inside the kit box. Okay, here's the Chinook HC1 RAF version. Uh, the kit number of Revell is 04043. It's a standard Revell box, side opening, and on the inside, the first I'm detecting is there is no. Um, there yeah, are no bags inside the box, so every sprue is there in there individually. And as could be if expected from a kit, one in a raffle, some of the parts have come off the frames. Um, let me sort this out first. There's the clear sprue instructions all right here is the decals my friend had made for me i'm gonna show them to you later again and uh, here's uh, one of the halves for the fuselage are supposed to go here's another one should be going here oh yeah like that and uh, the propeller blades. Even though one in a raffle, the kit seems pretty complete. Let's take a look at the first, first at the um, kit instructions. It's about A5, half letter size, but uh, this is like, this is a pretty interesting way to arrange it just flip over the pages um, of course as in every Revell kit you can see that the uh, painting instructions are given in Revell color codes so there is no reference to any other color brand than Revell but um, my Chinook is going to be overall white for the United Station uh, United Nations so I don't really care. There's a sprue layout sheet and the action goes right into building up the cockpit. And everything is done in the usual Revell fashion, very clear, not really difficult to understand. But for a 144 scale kit, 23 steps, 24 steps, of the construction is actually quite a bit. I'm really surprised, as I am by the number of the parts, really. Okay, here's the decal sheet. Um, let's see. Printed in Italy by Revell AG, Bünde. So, uh, given previous experience, this decal sheet proper is probably produced by Cartograph. Um, 
I wouldn't bet on it, but um, I think that's a cartograph uh, decal sheet. I should say decal, I just learned that. Okay, the printing is very nice. The film seems very thin and there is no offset in printing. So we should be really pleased with the results. Then uh, this additional sheet with the uh, United Nations marking was made by a friend of mine. Uh, these are um, homemade uh, decals and these need to be cut to size and shape before um, being applied. I've never done that before and I'm not a great fan of um, decaling, so I wonder how that will go. Let's have a look at the frets. Here's the clear part sprue. It contains a number of um, flat windows and bulged ones as needed for the Chinook. The complete nose of the Chinook is given as a clear part uh, due to do the complexity of the um, windows and everything is my guess. Uh, because that would be very, very difficult to make in individual uh, windows. Yeah, well, the bigger frets, you can see the hull halves have come off. But in general, the parts are free from any big scratches or something, so it shouldn't be too difficult to just use them. There are some sink marks on the bottom of the helicopter, but they will be very, very difficult to see once the um, parts are glued together and the helicopter is placed on its base. Otherwise, I cannot see any remarkable problems with this little gem here. Same thing goes for the rest of the fret. There's very nicely done and very um, detailed interior for the cockpit, even though I'm not quite sure there will be that much to see after everything is closed up. But Revel has certainly given this one a whole lot of attention. And this should build into a really, really nice Chinook. There are ejection marks on uh, several pieces, but they are not shining through. There are no distortions on the outer parts of the pieces. Um, second sprue. There is the second part of the fuselage and the same sink holes on the bottom. Um, possible there's a little sink mark back here, but it's really tiny. I wonder if that will be visible after painting at all. Uh, fortunately, the parts broke off the sprue with a little distance to the, to the actual kit piece, so with a little sanding there should be no problem in using these without any filling. On the sprue of the second hull half, there is the big floorboard with uh, some nice interior detailing. I wonder. No, there's no detailing on the inside walls of the fuselage halves. So leaving the rear access door um, open will be difficult without having to build a complete interior for the helicopter. On this sprue you have the rotor heads and the engine compartments, the dust filters and everything is very very nicely detailed. Another fret, this is the exterior bottom of the fuselage. 
and everything is in very good shape everything looks nice and detailed and there are a lot of uh, smaller antenna here given along the hull and this should be really really fun to build okay last sprue there is a this is a little mod here there is something that needs to be taken care of but the blades are very nicely shaped the mold lines are not too bad at all should be easy enough to clean and obviously these are Royal Air Force style um, rotor blades because this sprue is actually named RAF I'm quite sure that Revell issued um, a US uh, Air Force Chinook as well or US Army Chinook and probably then the rotor blades will be different but I can't vouch for that there are no sink marks there are no ejection marks whatsoever this is cleverly engineered this is really really nice if I take the opportunity to take the fallen off pieces and put them together trying to fit here well this is nice this is very clean everything seems to be fitting very nicely and this should be a pretty big model even in that scale right this is supposed to be fun and I'm jumping right into the action so I will talk to you in a bit bye